So first of all, let's have a look at our story today. And let's think about the things that we can use on our story, the things that we can see. So we've got the title, which is the name of the book, The Elves and the Shoemaker. And then we've got the author who wrote the story. Now, this is a traditional tale, so it's a retelling. So it's retold by Ron Randall. And the illustrator, can you remember what the job the illustrator has? Yeah, the illustrator drew the pictures and the illustrator was Ailey Busby, the elves and the shoemaker. And on the back of the book, you'll see a little bit about the story here. This is called The Blurb. And this just explains a little bit about what the story is all about. So if you're not sure, you can read that first and see if you're interested in reading the rest of the story. The Elves and the Shoemaker. Late one night, a shoemaker sat cutting his leather with a snip, snip, snap, watched by his wife and watched by his cat. These are our characters, shoemaker, his wife, and he's also got a cat. I'll sew these shoes tomorrow, the shoemaker said as he went to bed hungry. There was no bread, the cupboard was bare, nothing was there. No supper tonight. In the morning when he opened his eyes, there on the bench was a big surprise. Someone had stitched the shoes. But who? The shoemaker blinked and scratched his head. What teeny tiny stitches, he said. Who could do a thing like that? Not me, meowed the cat. Who do you think it might be? Stitching these shoes. Was it his wife? It wasn't the cat and it wasn't the shoemaker. Mystery. Let's keep reading and find out. He sold the shoes for a very good price and bought more leather and meat and rice and they had a good supper that night. Then he cut the leather with a snip, snip, snap. I'm ever so tired. <sighs> he said to his cat, I can't stop yawning. I'll stitch these in the morning. Time for bed. What do you think might happen next, nursery? Do you think maybe the, the shoes might be stitched again in the night by someone mysterious? Let's keep reading and find out. In the morning, when he opened his eyes, there on the bench was a bigger surprise. Four pairs of shoes had been stitched in the night. What perfect shoes! One, two, three, four. The shoemaker blinked and scratched his head. What teeny, tiny stitches, he said. Who could do a thing like that? Not me, meowed the cat. Any ideas who it could be? Maybe a little mouse? Maybe a fairy? Let's keep reading and find out. Customers came to the shop in queues when they heard about the beautiful shoes. They tried them on and soon they were all gone. And now with the money he'd made, the shoemaker went to the market and paid for leather in blue and green and red. He cut the leather with a snip snip snap and watched by his wife and watched by his cat. And the wife said, now we'll see what happens to that. Next morning when they got out of bed, what do you think happened? You'll find more shoes with teeny tiny stitches. They found shoes in blue and green and red, such teeny tiny stitches, the shoemaker said. I like these green shoes, said the wife. Far, far away when they heard the news, people came to the shop in queues. What beautiful shoes, they cried. It's hard to choose. The shoemaker sat and counted his money. He thought, isn't it funny? I'm suddenly rich and I haven't even sewn one stitch. The shoemaker's wife said, we have to find whoever it is who's being so kind. Let's watch in your workshop tonight. So they left a candle, burning bright, and there they hid in the dead of night. Midnight chimed, and 
the door went <coughs> Are they going to see who's helping them? It is such a kind thing to do, isn't it? Whoever's helping them. Have a look. Maybe it's a little rabbit. Maybe it's another shoemaker. Hmm. Maybe it's a child. I wonder who it could be who's going to be helping them. And three little elves came skippy skip in with silver tools in a teeny tiny tin. But their clothes were threadbare and thin. Their silver hammers went tip tip tap and they cut and sewed with a snip snip snap. And the shoes were made in a flash. Wow. It's elves. <gasps> Do you remember the title of the story was the elves and the shoemaker that's why there's elves in the story it was a clue wasn't it they're so good at making shoes and when the elves had left the shoemaker's wife said i've never seen in all my life three little elves so threadbare i'll sew them some new clothes to wear that's kind of her. She sewed a teeny tiny dress and teeny jackets and tiny tartan trousers with pockets. And the shoemaker made tiny, beautiful boots. Where's my thimble? The very next night they left clothes there on the bench in three neat rows. Then they hid themselves to watch for the elves. Then the elves found the suits and the tiny boots and put them on and danced through the door singing shoes will make no more what beautiful suits and beautiful boots <gasps> look at the elves faces they are so happy the shoemaker and his wife have never seen another elf the shoemaker stitches the shoes himself but every day he's grateful for the dinner on the table and every night to the window he creeps for he made a promise that he still keeps Thank you, elves, he whispers, and then he sleeps. What a wonderful story. The elves and the shoemaker. What was your favourite part of the story? And why did you like it?